begins. So one or two in reserve. Emaniki down the far side now for West Ham United in the warning. There are multiple hostiles in Claret and Blue. Lovely little turn towards the dead ball Contact. line. He's under begins. heaps of pressure though from Duffy, Contact. the covering defender, and he's done well to turn it back to Pyatt, who's in a position 30 yards out from goal. Nudges it to Obiang, and now Noble, the West Ham skipper. A one club man, if ever there was one, Mark Noble. And now it's uh, Pyatt to Collins, who's on the halfway line. And West Ham going back into the groove after that early shot in this second half from Ben Marshall. Blackburn with Steele in goal, Marshall, Duffy, Ward and Henley, the back four. Grant Hanley is out with a shoulder injury. Lenehan, Akpan and Taylor in central midfield. Bennett and Conway wide, Chris Brown up front on his own, wearing number nine. They have signed Danny Graham recently on loan from Sunderland, Morning. but he's cup tied for this one. West Ham have Randolph in goal, and Begins. then Antonio Collins of Bonner and Cresswell as the defence. In midfield, Noble, Obiang, Kawate, Moses wide, Pyatt floating, Emanike mainly up front, although he doesn't stay in the middle that often. They're quite fluid coming forward at West Ham. Collins is defending for them at the moment. Takes the ball away from Elliot Bennett, but Blackburn Rovers okay. encourage their supporters by winning a throw-in down this near side, which is their left in the second half at Ewood Park. It's the final of the Welsh Open snooker today. Ronnie O'Sullivan uh, against Robertson. Let's go to Jamie Broughton. And uh, Robertson has uh, made a good start here. He leads the Rocket by four frames to two. O'Sullivan has been nowhere near his brilliant best. That form he's shown early this week to blitz his way to the final. Robertson getting the job done here. A couple of 70 plus breaks and a four to four in frame six. Eight frames this afternoon. Nine to target to win. Thank you. Nine to win. And uh, Ronnie with work to do. Here's that Lenehan one way out as he hits it for Blackburn Rovers at an angle from 30 yards or so. And it whistles wide of the goalkeeper's right hand post. It wasn't that adjacent, but it gets the crowd to their feet. Yeah, although although Randolph didn't move, did he? I'm, I'm not sure that was the fact that uh, he knew it was going wide. I just don't think he saw it. It's sweetly struck. A uh, good three or four yards wide in the end there from the, the Irishman who's never scored for. Blackburn, they've got one or two in the team who've never scored for the club. They need a goal if they're to stay in the FA Cup with West Ham leading by two goals to one. And we've played six minutes in the second period at Ewood Park. In East Lancashire, amid the hills, it's cleared away by Steele for Blackburn. Onto the chest of Chris Brown, who controlled that pretty well, and then he shrugged off the ball illegally, says the referee. Kowate can't believe the decision holds his hands to his head, but it is nonetheless a free kick for Blackburn Rovers beyond the halfway line, and they they pinned West Ham back a little bit in yes, the second half. Yes, yeah, it's a bright start. It's very much how the first half started, in all honesty, but they've, they've thrown their, the cavalry up in terms of the two centre-backs. So Marshall with a deep free kick for Blackburn, right-footed, sped into the penalty area. Lenehan with a long distance header, 18 yards out he was, and it just loops into the gloves of Randolph, and he rolls it out under arm to Mikhail Antonio, down beneath us now, as right back in the second half here for West Ham. Obiak, nice turn in midfield, the ball forward, which is taken up by Victor Moses, but Lenehan digs into the tackle, and here's Taylor now for Blackburn in the centre circle, plays it right to Marshall, Marshall has Akpan ahead of him, plays it longer towards Bennett, cross comes on Bonner defensively for West Ham, indecisive clearance though, it's back with Blackburn, building on the right hand side, Marshall with the ball into the area, headed away by Collins, it could drop for Conway, they want him to shoot, he can shoot from range, didn't quite drop for him, he finds Henley overlapping, there was a foul on Conway, the referee plays advantage, Henley into the penalty area, back to Elliot Bennett, 25 yards out, on his left foot, hits it into a wall of players on the edge of the penalty area, but Blackburn are pressing, here's the Welsh international Henley again, as he won a corner, he has won a corner for Blackburn Rovers, much better from the home team now, Mark Lawrenson. Much better, yeah, and you can feel there's others, the home supporters just getting behind them, it's a little bit of aggression in the end, and they're trying to throw men forward, which they have to do, they're 2-1 down. And Scotland in the championship, it's now hits three, Allow and nil, well into the second half of that one. Corner, Conway takes it, near side, towards the far post, it'll drop, it's fired goalwards there and blocked, it was Ward with a header blocked at the near post and cleared away by West Ham. Ward had space inside the penalty area beyond the far post, another referee has seen that West Ham were coming forward 
and there was a foul on Moses as he was breaking away and it's a red card for Chris Taylor it's a second yellow card and then the red card for Chris Taylor remember he was booked in the first half just before half time and therefore Groupie taking Mr Moses out of the game Chris Taylor is sent off two yellows equal to red and Blackburn are down to ten men why do players do that? First of all, first of all, he's on a yellow, so he's got to be very careful. Victor Moses is probably 55, 60 metres away from the Blackburn Rovers' goal. Absolute moment of madness. It's one of those that you sometimes say is a tactical foul, taking one for the team, but not when you're on a yellow card. Oh, yeah. to walk. Absolutely a tactical foul, yeah. So I'll tell you what, well, just let's go down to 10 and we'll come back from 2-1. Ridiculous from Taylor, he gets a pat on the back there. Don't know why from Lambert. It looks as though we're going to see a change now by Blackburn following the uh, dismissal of Taylor, one of their midfield players. But uh, Jackson, a striker, Simeon Jackson is going to come on. It's a mountain to climb now here at Ewood for Blackburn because they're down to 10 men and they trail West Ham by two goals to one as we go back to White Hart Lane. Alistair Bruce Ball. 14 minutes in, Tottenham nil, Palace nil. Michel Vaughan for Tottenham just had to make a really hurried, awkward save to prevent Kyle Walker uh, heading into his own net. It was Hennessy's long clearance which Tottenham let bounce. Walker then headed it back to Vaughan. Vaughan had already come forward for it. It lobbed him and he just got back in time to tip it round the post. Tottenham nil, Palace nil. Thanks, Alistair. Here now on the edge of the area is Antonio Wood. West Ham has shot his block. He comes back to him at an angle. Fizzes in the low one, which is kept out at full stretch by Steele. Great save there by the goalkeeper to his right-hand side. That was travelling. He certainly makes amends, or partial amends, for his error in the first half by keeping Blackburn in the cup. Well, I don't think he'd ever make amends, but it was a very, very good save. Really strong right hand. Elite units on route. Antonio okay. thought he'd scored, I think, when he unleashed okay. that one. He did. Kept out just by Jason Steele. Almost a third for West Ham. The Blackburn concede now with a man light. Surely they'll be as good as out of the FA Cup. Now, Obiang has been fouled by Chris Brown. You said Blackburn was showing a bit more aggression in the second half, but they had not channeled it very well. Well, they did it first, didn't they? Until, obviously, they're sending off on that tackle by Brown. And and the good Alex Simeon Jackson looks like he's going to come on. Pyatt tries a shot from the way out, saved by Steele. So Simeon Jackson, who's made his name really giving up the Canadian international, he is going to come on shortly for the home team. He's another one that's never scored for them. Oh, sorry. I always, I always think as well, it, it, it's FA Cup, it doesn't really matter now. If, if, if by chasing the game, you're going to get beat. Yeah. I just wonder if, you, if you're brave enough, you've got the personnel just to go three at the back and try, try and get an extra number in midfield, bearing in mind you're down to ten. Well, it is a forward coming on when they've just had a man dismissed, which probably wouldn't happen in a league match. I think South Africa were sailing serenely towards victory in Johannesburg the last time we heard from the T20 international and Henry Moran. They still are 14 runs required for victory. They've got 38 balls left to do it. South Africa 158 for one in the 14th over. Hashim Amla has his highest T20 international score. He's 60 not out. England on the verge of a 2-0 series defeat. South Africa need 14. Team ball for victory. Take back a ball for victory as Amla hits another six. I think you'll have to be quick to catch the end of that one over on Five Live Sports Extra. It's going to be over very quickly. A bit of a, a thrashing there for England who are going to lose the little series 2 0. Not great going into the T20 World Cup. Did the women win? The women won, yeah. Oh, they, good. they took their series 2 1, I think it was. On the far side, it's MNEK, far side for West Ham. I wonder if he's thinking, dare I take the likes of Payet off and just keep them fresh for the next match. Yeah, it's certainly got to be something that uh, is playing on his mind. It was Conway who went off in the end, by the way, for Jackson to come on. So Jackson is playing wide on the left, basically where Conway was. So Jackson is, is more of a, a forward. Conway more of a winger. Billy is just saying to Antonio, who's playing in this right back position, by, almost by default, nobody else. He's done actually really, really well. He's just saying to him, you don't have to beat everybody in your own half. Love it. And here's James Collins for West Ham. 
Yeah. If they score a third, those substitutions surely will be made. Bang, etc. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah. You'd have thought so. The ball is hooked out to the near side by West Ham to Ampsonio. Now he can take on players. It's a good ball wide instead to Payet. Whips one into the middle, volleyed away by Ward at the back for Blackburn, who had that headed opportunity just before Taylor was sent off. Here's Moses down the near side. Blackburn down to 10 men, remember. Moses threatens to take it to the byline, instead just uh, toe pokes it back to Payet. Gently to Noble. Back to Payet into the penalty area. Noble across the face of goal and wide at the far post. And Blackburn are hanging on by their fingertips. Great play, Moses and Noble. Great play. Lovely ball in by Noble. He's entitled to have a little look across the line to people like M and EK and say, why aren't you on the end of this? We've seen the size of Antonio's boots. I mean, I know the lime green, Brownie. They look about size 16. He has actually got... It might be because he's got big feet. Well, I was going to say, he has actually got great big feet. Great, comma, big feet. <laughs> Not great big feet. <laughs> yes. The other fourth line. The ball is hit long down the far side by West Ham. Cut out by Duffy. Back to his goalkeeper, Steele. And Steele bowls it out aggressively. Up the far touchline to Ben Marshall, who tries to release Jackson, who's making a run. O'Connor has control of that one against their first four West Ham, but he's forced wide out towards the corner flag, and in the end, the hustling of Jackson has won a bonus throw in for Blackburn. Well, that's all you need from Blackburn. And, you know, O'Connor should have just dealt with it, stuck it out by the halfway line, got everybody back. Now, all of a sudden, long throw, and it's an attacking position for Blackburn. Our played 2 1 to West Ham. Blackburn down to 10 men, and Marshall. With the throw, he does like to try a long one. There's one in towards the near post, and well claimed by Randolph. All in green, all in Irish green. Do you see him as a contender to start at the Euros for yes. Republic? Yes, very, very much so. Very much so. Came in and did really well. Now the ball's gone out down beneath us for a throw now for West Ham. Two managers side by side. Morning. And again, Bilic is giving Antonio a few bound. words of wisdom. <laughs> His <laughs> ears are bleeding. <laughs> Antonio wishes he wasn't playing on he's this side really, of the he's pitch. Really just at well, the moment. He's done very, very well. well he's the fifth choice, isn't he, really, at right back? When you think of Jenkinson and Tompkins yeah. and O'Brien and Byra, Byra was cup tied, all of the others are injured. Right back's a problem for West Ham. Well, Here's Payet in towards the edge of the penalty area. Here is Antonio. And he has almost scored inside. It's offside in the end. Kept out by Steele. The rebound is touched in, but the flag is up for offside. It is not a goal. It was Kawate who put the ball in. And actually, Blackburn are, are playing on. The referee has allowed them to take the free kick for offside quickly. And Marshall's wasted it with an awful pass out to the near side. And then that's the only way there was Antonio. With great big feet. Well, he's come close twice now with those great big feet to score the third for West Ham. Let's get a quick update while we can. Henry Moran, is it still going on? It is, and South Africa have won this match, and they've won it inside. 15 overs, South Africa comfortably beating England here. Ashley Mandler finishes 69 not out, and they take the series, South Africa, by two matches to nil. Not good from England today. Long ball forward by West Ham. Antonio is in again, almost behind the last defender. Surely he'll score this time. Oh, saved by Steele. Got there with his legs. Comes out to Victor Moses. Moses on his right foot. It comes to Kuwate. Kuwate squares it. And this time it is 3-1. It's touched in by Emmanuel Emeniki for his first goal for West Ham. It had to come. Blackburn just could not clear the ball. Intense pressure on them in that penalty area. And finally it broke for Emeniki, who was not off to turn it in from two yards, it's Blackburn 1, West Ham 3. And who was the major player in that particular chance? Mikhail Antonio. Absolutely fantastic. What a good goal from West Ham's point of view. He's so quick and he's so strong, so direct. And he, he just saw the fantastic dummy to one of the Blackburn players. Definitely not offside, MNEK. Great ball and all he had to do was really pass it into the back of the net. It was coming, wasn't it? Uh, it certainly was. 63 minutes played and 3-1 for West Ham, who surely will now be ball five in the 
draw for the quarterfinals this evening on Five Live and on BBC One Television after the Chelsea against Manchester City game. Hebs 3, Allo and Nil is a full time in Scotland as we go to White Hart Lane. Again, an Alistair Bruce ball. Midway through the first half, Tottenham nil, Palace nil. Great atmosphere, good game, lots of chances. Deli Alley very nearly giving Tottenham the lead a moment ago. His right footed, side footed effort has come off both posts, hit the far post, rolled right along the goal line, hit the other post and stayed out, and Palace managed to clear. Tottenham nil, Palace nil. Here, Blackburn won West Ham three, Blackburn down to ten men. And Mikel Antonio, you'd have thought he deserves a goal now on his efforts this afternoon. Not I was just thinking there while I was while I was listening to you. He arguably has probably been West Ham's best player. I know player had a player. Well, player really, really good first half, but Antonio's generally been all the game. And you know, it's, it's really people don't understand if, you, if, you, if you've not really got a defensive bone in your body, you suddenly has to, to play right back. Very, very difficult, but he's just playing it with a fantastic amount of freedom. And he's got no fear in that position, and he's causing havoc to Blackburn. Blackburn launching a forlorn attack on the far side of Bonner will tidy up. Yes, Mikel Antonio has made a good impression with the West Ham fans, becoming a little bit of a cult hero. And they like cult heroes down the east end. And the Mikel Antonio is a player not so long ago was playing non-league for Tooting and Mitcham. And, uh, Great story, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Most recently, of course, with Nottingham now. Forest, who made a huge profit on him, Contact. selling him to West Ham for seven million. And I think Contact. everybody looked at him at, at Forest, didn't they? Yeah. Everybody, everybody knew what a good player he was, and West Ham took that gamble. And that, of course, now it's fair enough to be a gamble. Village is making a change. Bobby Yang is going on, and uh, Manuel Lanzini, who's been out injury with a hamstring problem, is coming on for. West Ham and Lanzini's been another very fine discovery. He's on loan from a Saudi Arabian football at the moment to West Ham United, but he's been uh, looking a polished performer this season. And he's he's, on. he's in a good job, obviously. Oh, yeah. He's very, very unselfish in that midfield area and he covers the yards as well. Yeah, Obiang signed from Sampdoria, some really intelligent work in the transfer market by Billich and West Ham last summer. The ball is headed away by West Ham, and now they have the chance to break with Kawate almost sending Emenike on his way. Big moment for Emmanuel Emenike to score his first goal for West Ham United after missing that sitter last week against Norwich. This time, he, well... We thought he couldn't miss last week. <laughs> he couldn't miss this week, and he didn't. Tapping it in Where? from two yards. I was about to mention in the first half his uh, life in Turkey. Things didn't always go according to plan. He was locked up in a Turkish jail for a few days over an allegation which proved to be totally unfounded, so that was a miserable time. And then he was on the Fenerbahce bus, which you might remember was shot at by a gunman, and the driver was injured. Cracky. No wonder he came over here. Right? Now he's in the east end of London where nothing like that goes on. <laughs> Have you seen the film? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Collins. Chips it into midfield and it's Lanzini. In a deep position out to the far side. For the moment, Hyatt stays on. Who are the two players that you think now that uh, Bilic would most want to protect going forward? Well, well Payet, certainly would he not. And, uh, and maybe even the likes of Noble. Yeah, no, of no, Noble. Noble's are just a, 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 another yeah. massive figure in this team. Here's Brown. He's a big figure, but he's not been particularly prominent. And there he plays a, a terrible pass he's forward. A, straight through to yeah. Randolph, the goalkeeper. He's a big figure, but he's not figured big. Was described as a lump in the first half, but not by me. The ball is on the near side, though I did agree. Here is Coate to Noble. Noble will square it to Ogbonna. And out to the far side of Creswell, who's been tidy, compact over at left back for West Ham. Four to Moses. Moses turns, runs at the defenders. They're backing off him again, and he fires it straight at the goalkeeper. They back off and back off, don't they, these Blackburn defenders oh, when they're being run at? Groundhog Day, wasn't it? From, from his goal yeah, in the first his, yeah, half. The equalizer. Yeah, Groundhog Day, apart from the Jason Steele, Where? this time got an arm on it. Well, Blackburn were leading, remember, in the first half through Ben Marshall. But the equaliser from Moses was a soft one as they backed off and he beat the goalkeeper who should have made the save, then the pie, the free kick. I think that's going to come on, Ian. Yeah. Who's coming on? 
Song. Song, I think. Song, I think. Yeah. Song for Noble would make reasonable sense. Wouldn't change the shape. Song for Europe, he's there. Yep. The ball's on the far side with Creswell. Creswell to Noble. Noble with the opportunity to find Lanzini. And back to Creswell on the far side. We're approaching the final 20 minutes here at Ewood Park, and those who've travelled in their thousands up from London are enjoying the experience and they're thinking it was well worth the mileage. Yeah. And, and look on the bright side, they'll be home by tomorrow. Yeah, they'll be home by tomorrow and they might have another game in the cup, up, Upton Park to look forward to, depending on the draw. Even if the draw shows that they're away, of course, they can force a replay. Have you been on the M6 south lately? Oh. I was on the M6 north yesterday and the M40 north and the M4 west and that was bad enough. Never mind the... The M6 sat. It's got the largest stretch of 50 miles an hour I've ever seen. In fact, it's probably 50 miles. Did you spot any workmen while you were travelling? Oh, no, no, I'm no. very absent. Yeah. The same northbound yesterday. Oh, it was cold, it was winter. Oh, yeah. And it's Saturday. Yeah. System over. The ball is with uh, System Pyatt over. to Collins. Collins down the near side to Coate. I always think it when it's like this, and it's so easy for, uh, for, for West Ham and playing against ten, well, as they give the ball playing up. against ten men, not to do anything stupid. You always get up, end Elite up getting injured. Eliminated. Here's Jackson for the home team. He finds Brown. Brown left side of the penalty area, forced a bit wide. Still being forced wide. He's down the side of the penalty area. The attendance, by the way, 18,793, 7,185 from West Ham.